many people uh, who look at meteorites uh, think that Earth is a target, target Earth. Well, it isn't really a target. It's just accidentally in the way. There are rocks buzzing around all over the place. Every week or two on Earth, a visitor from space enters our atmosphere and blows up. Friction, impact with the dense atmosphere. They're coming in at velocities of, well, a slow one may be going as slow as 10,000 kilometers an hour, a super fast one perhaps 80 or 90,000 kilometers an hour. At that speed, the air feels very dense to them and they'll get down into the atmosphere maybe 30 kilometers above the ground, maybe as low as 15, and blow up. Well, we have a lot of evidence for meteorite impacts on the, uh, on the ground. And it doesn't come just from the meteorites themselves. In fact, other lines of evidence are every bit as important, particularly the impact craters that I have listed here, then meteorites, of course, and then some objects you've probably never heard of, tektites. Okay, impact craters. They're often referred to as meteorite impact craters, but that's kind of a misnomer because it's not the meteorite small fragments that caused it. It's a bigger chunk of rock, one that did not explode, or if it exploded, it was big enough to have a large piece left over that was not involved in the explosion that hit the ground at high velocity, high enough that it didn't just go splunk like throwing a rock in the mud, but rather it exploded when it hit the ground. In this case, it creates an explosion crater that may be uh, 10 to 20 times its own diameter. Perhaps the most famous meteorite crater or impact crater on the planet is the Behringer Meteorite Crater in Arizona. It's just a little over a kilometer wide, 180 meters deep, and the impacting meteoroid, which is an iron meteoroid, was about 50 meters wide. This is an impact that occurred about 50,000 years ago. Notice that the surrounding ground, if you go far enough away, uh, is composed of small hills on more or less flat ground, but near the crater, there's this ridge. The rocks get tipped back, right adjacent to the hole in the ground. This is the location, the blue dot, in the northwest corner of Arizona, just a two-hour drive from the Grand Canyon. This uh, crater has several incorrect names. On most road maps, it gets referred to as the Meteor Crater. Well, you can't have a meteor crater. The meteor is an atmospheric effect, not a, not a solid object. Call it a meteorite crater if you like, uh, preferably meteoroid crater, or just impact crater is the best name to use. There are um, over 300 uh, impact craters on Earth. Now, if you were to go online and look at how many impact craters there are, uh, you would see a compilation of about 190 of them, but these are size restricted, usually around about 8 or 10 uh, kilometers in diameter, uh, unless they're particularly important, and then maybe down to one kilometer. But there are lots of, of craters that aren't in the, in the list. Many of these are smaller. There are 22 craters bigger than eight kilometers wide in Canada, uh, three of those in Saskatchewan. I'm going to take a, a look at three of these. Uh, the first one, the Houghton Crater, up in uh, Devon Island in the Northwest Territories, the Manicougan Crater in Quebec, and the Deep Bay Crater in Saskatchewan. The Houghton Crater, way over there on Devon Island, looks like this. It impacted uh, some 39 million years ago. 
left a, a, a crater hole uh, 23 kilometers in diameter from this raised rim on over to that raised rim. But it is a more complex than the Behringer crater, uh, and all big ones are. The central part, initially a big crater, bounced back up over the next few months, forming a central raised dome, resulting in a trough around it. You can see the trough, uh, a ring trough that runs all around the dome. Coming to Saskatchewan, there are actually seven impact craters in Saskatchewan, uh, but the four on the south are all buried. The impact was long enough ago that sediment has been washed in, completely filled the craters up, and there's no surface indication of them at all. Uh, they've been found uh, during the dr drilling uh, for petroleum. The three in the north, however, uh, can be seen. The Carswell one in the uh, far uh, northwest uh, there is the biggest, but you can't get to see it. You can't even identify it flying over it. The Gao Lake is a very nice one, but it's only five kilometers, and you can't very well get to that one either without a float plane. But the Deep Bay Crater right here, you can drive up fairly close to it. You can drive up to the town of South End, uh, rent a boat, and you can go fishing in this crater if you want to. All right, the South End of Reindeer Lake, uh, this 125 kilometer long lake in uh, Saskatchewan, a little bit of Manitoba. Uh, the crater itself is about 13 kilometers wide. The rim of the crater, you can't see it on the photograph. You can see the lake, which partly fills it. It's an 11 kilometer diameter lake. And it's partly filled with washed in sediment. The impact was 100 million years ago. So we can't see this central dome. It's buried under the sediment at the bottom. And then, of course, that's buried under this lake. Uh, I once uh, canoed around the lake, took all day. Quebec has uh, Canada's largest impact crater. The, uh, um, I don't know if you can see it on this map. I'll go over and try and point to it. The Eye of Quebec, it's sometimes called. On a radar image, it looks like this. You can see the uh, ring trough. You can see the central dome. And you can see that on this uh, photograph from satellites. The red line is the crater rim that's hard to see on the photograph. It's hard to identify on the ground as well. Uh, what really shows up is this ring lake, ring trough, with the central dome. 